What's going on everybody and welcome back. So I do want to apologize for the last video. Uh, if you guys found it like hectic or crazy, it kind of was. Uh, my reasoning being uh, I was kind of stressed out because I spent a lot of money on the coilovers and I really was not happy with the way the car was riding. But that being said, I'm going to stop talking crap because I got this thing raised up to like a reasonable ride height and it actually rides really good now and I'm very happy with the way that it rides. Um, I've been like beating on the car way harder just because I feel so much more confident driving it because of the way the suspension handles. It's really awesome. Um, I would take you guys for a ride tonight, but I don't really want to drive it too much more because I'm worried that I'm going to wear away my rear tires because I feel like the toe is really off on the rear tires. So the only time I'm going to drive it now is to the alignment shop. Um, I have been driving it like probably too much for something that's not aligned or probably as out of whack as this thing is. Um, you know, I drove it on the highway and stuff. Absolutely rips. Uh, I can't wait to take you guys for some highway pulls. It's really sick. This thing just, you know, it just moves so good on the highway. It just really can stretch its legs, you know, because around town, I just can't get going fast in it. You know what I mean? Like I can't get going over, you know, 60 miles an hour on like the sorts of roads that I live by, you know, there's not really big open stretches like Connecticut's like bumpy roads and but on the highway this thing can really rip. So I have to take you guys for some highway pulls pretty soon, but I'll show you guys the car right now. I love the ride height, honestly. I think it's perfect. Hopefully my heater's not too loud, but I need to be warm. Um, yeah, we got like a wheel gap up front that's looking really nice. And then we got a wheel gap in the back that's looking about the same. I haven't really measured it yet after I drove it, after adjusting it. I'm probably going to do that right now. But all in all, I love the way the car sits. Like the slam look was cool for like, you know, a few hours. And then I realized like I was going to hit my mud flaps on speed bumps and stuff like that, which I honestly might still. This car is really low and these are pretty small wheels and tires. That's probably why. They're like a 24 and a half inch tall tire um, or maybe 24. But anyway, the car looks great. I'm really happy with it. It rides great. So I'm happy with that. And all in all, you know, I'm satisfied with the purchase. I had messed around with dampening a little bit. Um, I pretty much have it set as stiff as it goes. Like, I want this thing to be stiff. Um, that's just the way I like it. I mean, my truck rides really stiff, so I'm used to it. To be honest, I got in my truck the other day and I thought that it rode smooth, which just blew my mind because I've never been in a vehicle that rode harder than my truck. I don't know what it is, just the nature of the vehicle, what I did to it, the way I lowered it. I think I messed up the geometry of the suspension because it rides stiff, but this thing, stiffer <laughs> which is you know cool because that's like the point it's uh it's race car you know it's supposed to be brutal and unforgiving and like you know just like the motor mount inserts i put in that translate all the vibrations and when i have any kind of clutch chatter or anything like that i feel everything in the car which you know i want to um that's just part of driving something that uh you know is like driving for pleasure you know i really do enjoy driving and i enjoy this car a lot but yeah, enough talking. Let me get down to what we're actually going to do in this video. So today I was trying to decel rather quickly because I was going, you know, too fast and I was trying to slow down. And I noticed that after a second or two of hitting the brake, I started to hear like some a singing noise. And I'm wondering, like, what is this noise? And uh, I, I do think that it was brakes. And, you know, I have put brand new pads and rotors on the front of this thing. There's ceramic pads and everything. It's all pretty nice stuff. I know that that's not making the noise. So based on that, I know that it's in the rear with these drums. And you know what? I never have even looked inside of these drums since I got the car. I've just been, you know, letting it rip. I know the front brakes are good. They do most of the braking, but I never did check on these guys. And that noise that I heard didn't sound very good. And it didn't feel good in the brake pedal either. So I'm going to pull these uh, wheels off in the back and I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the drum off and see what our shoes look like on there See if they're out of adjustment or if they need you know any sort of tweaking or if maybe I need to buy a whole new brake setup uh, I was looking into maybe converting to a Disc setup because some of the 97 Accords or the EX I think the EX model actually had disc brakes in the rear which is preferable That's very ideal. I would like that purely because of the looks and you get increased stopping power too. 
not too much you probably wouldn't notice it but you know there's a lot that goes into it like the proportioning valve in the front that divvies up how much brake fluid gets sent to front and rear is different they say the master cylinder is different you could probably get away without doing that but it would be an expensive upgrade for this car something i might do later on but i think for now i just want to make sure that uh, they're adjusted correctly and if i need uh, you know shoes for the back or a new drum that i get those parts coming because Safety is a big concern, you know, you need to be able to stop and any help that I can get, even if it is a little bit from the rear, I'd like it. And I got to get rid of that noise because that doesn't feel good. But I'm going to get to work tearing this thing apart and I'll show you guys what I find in here and maybe how to adjust some e-brake shoes or I guess not just e-brake shoes. These are actually the brake shoes in the drum in back here. I'm used to disc brakes. So our first diagnostic step here is actually going to be uh, I got the car jacked up and I'm going to go ahead and take the wheel and I'm going to spin it and realistically you should hear the shoes on the inside of the drum there. They should make a noise because they should be dragging slightly so that when you hit the brake it's there. But there's actually no visible resistance like it doesn't actually fight at all and if you get this thing spinning it'll just spin freely forever. And that's honestly not what you want with a, a drum brake car. You actually want a little bit of drag there from the brakes so that they're actually there and uh, they're waiting. You know what I mean? They're waiting to stop the car. So based on that, I'm going to assume these are way out of adjustment. I'm also going to assume the, the drums are really rusted on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and bust this wheel off, see if we can get this drum off and take a look at uh, how bad everything is down there. It is an old car, 23 years old. And there's like been no maintenance on the car ever. So you know what? I'm willing to bet these are probably <laughs> original brakes back here or something ridiculous like that. I don't know. Maybe not. But I guess we'll see once we get in there how bad they are. All right. So there are a couple of ways that we can do this. Uh, one way would be to smack the uh, drum right here with a hammer. And then we can try to get it to break loose. And the other way would be to take a bolt such as this one right here. I'm not sure on the thread pitch, but I found it in uh, just lying on the ground. <laughs> and uh, it threads in to these holes right here. So what that's used for is it actually pushes on the hub assembly and it'll actually push the drum right off and you get two spots that you can work back and forth or whatever, uh, or get two bolts on it. And you can get it off that way too. So I'm probably just gonna try to smack it with the hammer first, we'll see if that works. And if it doesn't, then we'll try this method. Uh, but these threads are pretty rusty in these uh, drums here. We'll see if we can get it off. All right, so we'll give this hammer trick a shot. We'll see. I don't know about that. I think it got loose. I'll try again. I may have to try the bolt, guys. This is uh, not doing it. All right, so I'm gonna try this method here. Definitely fighting us here. Popping. I hear it. Got to get this side up to speed. There we go. Whew. That's tight. Maybe now I'll give it another smack. now just getting hung up on the hub I think We're pretty close though All right, there 
it is. Oh, with a ton of brake dust. All right, so it's definitely a bit of a struggle, but I did get the um, drum off, and so now we can take a look at it. It's a little bit grooved. I think I'm probably just going to have it cut, and I'm gonna try to clean up the outside as good as I can, and I'll paint it before I throw it on again. I'm just gonna paint it black. I don't want it to stand out. I don't like when people paint them red. It's an ugly brake drum, so definitely not gonna do red. But uh, yeah, so I like, um, and no offense if anybody likes to paint their drums red. I just personally don't like it, but that's my personal opinion. Everybody's got one. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up here. So we know that these shoes were not adjusted correctly, but there's still plenty of lining left. You can probably see plenty of lining left on these shoes. So what I'm gonna do is probably just sand them a little bit and uh, make sure they're nice and cleaned up and ready to do some more braking for me. But I'm gonna see if I can start spraying some of this down here. All this stuff's pretty nasty, so it's gonna take quite a while to, uh, to spray it all down, but I'm just gonna go through and, you know, try to clean it all up best I can. And, uh, yeah, so you can see all that nasty stuff coming out of there. <clears throat> But this is carb cleaner. I'll probably get some more brake clean tomorrow. Um, probably have the rotors cut tomorrow too. So. Yeah, this is all caked on brake dust from just years. Years of braking. And that's that. That can is done for. But, yeah. I'm gonna do some more cleaning on it and I'm gonna have the drum cut as well on the inside so we'll have a nice clean edge. And then uh, this thing, I'll adjust it. You can see your little adjuster is uh, right in here. There's like a little spiral, uh, like tooth, toothy thing there. And if you flick that with a screwdriver and spin it, it actually adjusts the shoes outwards and they'll get tighter to the inside of the actual drum itself. And that's what does all your braking back here. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these. I would say most cars, if you never took, if you never taken a look at your drums, they're probably out of adjustment, honestly. And if you spin the wheel like that and it doesn't drag at all, and the wind just the you know wheel just spins freely like this, like it's just you know straight hooked up to the hub, and there's nothing dragging on it, and that's how you know um, you definitely need an adjustment on your uh, drums. So moving over to the other side of the car. I have it jacked up over here now and I want you to see if you can hear it on the video. I'm not sure if you'll be able to, but on this side, I think this is the side that was giving me that noise, but uh, there's one area of the actual um, drum that actually grabs because it's out of round. So there's one spot that actually grabs on the shoe and I think that's the noise I was hearing because it was hitting once every revolution and it created like a like a whirling noise, like it was like whoop, 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 you know, when it spun around. But see if you can hear it. Yeah, so it's just like a scraping noise. So it looks like it is, or sounds like it's hitting in one area. So I think we have a bit of an out of round, um, drum there so we'll see if getting them cut fixes our problem so I'm gonna go ahead and bust this other one off so I can have them both cut so it's the following day and I have the drums right here they were turned on a it's like a brake lathe it's got like a, a carbide tip and you sort of set it and then it actually moves the the tip or the rotor I'm not really sure but it just kind of cuts a straight line all the way across and it makes sure that the surface is nice and cleaned up and I was lucky enough my dad took him to his shop and they have a brake lathe there so they uh, he cut them for me and sanded them make sure there are no burrs and he cleaned them out got all the metal shavings out because you don't want the metal shavings to embed themselves into your uh, shoes because then they will squeak forever but yeah so these are really cleaned up you got to get rid of this lip right here because that helps when you actually want to adjust the uh, shoes for the brakes uh, if there's a lip there, you don't really get an accurate reading of how tight it is. So when you get rid of that lip by having it machined, it uh, makes the whole process better. So I think right now I'm going to go ahead and chip off a lot of this like rust that's flaking off here because these things are pretty shot. They were just barely in spec, so these have been cut before. Uh, they're not the original, uh, or they're they the original, I assume. 
but they were cut before, so it's not the first time, which is good, I guess. But they're still in spec, so that's also good. So I'm gonna peel all this crap off and then maybe hit it with like a, a nice rust converter. And then after that, I'll probably hit it with some nice paint. And then I'd like to throw these things on tonight and take this thing for a rip, hopefully, and see if all of our work was worthwhile. Also, I gotta wash down the whole brake assembly too and do the adjustment process. So that was like painstaking, like that took me way too long to chip all the rust off of it. Most people will probably just buy new drums and I probably will eventually, but for right now, I'm trying to keep this uh, budget and you know, it doesn't uh, make me go faster, but they are gonna work just as good as new drums, so that's fine with me. So what I got here is a little bit of rust converter. So I'm gonna hit it with this and they say you're supposed to wait 24 hours or something, but I never do. So I'll hit it with this, let it dry, and then I'll hit it with a little bit of black paint, and then we'll be uh, good to throw these on, hopefully. So I let it dry for a little while, not that long though, honestly, and uh, I hit it with a coat of primer, and I'm gonna wait for this to dry off a little bit, and then I'll hit it with some black. Um, I taped it off because I don't wanna get any overspray on any of the new surface in there. This one I just hit with rust converter. You can see it starts to turn like a darker color and less orange looking, so that's how you know it's working. Um, it still looks like crap, honestly. There's all kinds of like paint chips that are left from last time and old rust flakes that I can chip off, and. You know, it is what it is. It, uh, it doesn't look the best, but it's going to serve a purpose and it's going to stop the car. And from a distance, hopefully it'll look decent. I'll paint them uh, nice. I don't know. We'll see what kind of black spray paint I have. But yeah, so in the meantime, I'm going to work over here now and I'm going to try to actually clean this whole system up. I got some brake clean and I'm just going to douse this whole setup and get all the brake dust out of here that's built up over the years. Maybe wire a brush a little bit and stuff too. but. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and work on cleaning that up right now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clean up this whole assembly here, the shoes and uh, you know the, uh, the adjuster and everything. There's all kinds of brake dust in here. I already sprayed it a little bit, but I'm gonna hit it again. Glasses on, obviously, so you don't get brake clean in your eyeballs. I hear that's not good for your vision. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go crazy here. Spray this thing down. Not too bad since I already sprayed this side, but. Just gonna get on the side here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. It's pretty much sprayed down. So we'll let that dry. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the other side. And after they're both dry, and my calipers are all, or calipers, my drums are all dry, then we'll be all set. And I'll uh, be able to put them on. So in an effort to uh, speed up the drying process here, I got my propane heater cranking on these guys. They're hung from some bungee cords from my garage. And we'll see if we can get these guys to dry while I go eat dinner. And then when I come back, I'll uh, try to do the adjustment procedure. But they're looking pretty good. 
paint job's not flawless, but you know what? They're much better than they were, so I'm happy. They're good enough for me for now. So, yep, just waiting on paint to dry now. So what I ended up doing was after everything dried up, I went ahead and I adjusted this side and I got it pretty tight. Um, you want it so that uh, when you spin it here, there's actually a bit of a drag and you can feel it on the drum itself. You may be able to hear it too. I don't know if you can hear it over the propane heater, but it does drag a little bit, which is what you want. It means the shoes are right there and they're ready to uh, you know, apply the brakes. So. That's ideal right there. And I'll show you guys on the other side how I adjusted it. And I'll show you uh, how hard it is to actually get the drum on. And that's how you want it. But now that these are cut and they're perfectly round, we don't have any spots where they're uh, dragging more than others. It spins freely. So I'm excited to see how nice the brake pedal is after this. And I think the car's gonna stop a little better too. So we're over on the other side here and you can see the adjuster gear right down there. And that's the guy that we're actually gonna spin with our screwdriver. So you want to spin it the correct way. If you spin it uh, in the up direction like this, it's going to like bring this uh, little clicker up with it. But if you spin it down, it should click um, with this guy right here, which is actually how these brakes are supposed to be set. There's actually a way that uh, these are supposed to be self-adjusting and they may still work like that. But the way they're made to self-adjust is if you go in reverse and then you know get going at a pretty good speed and then slam on the brakes rather hard, it's supposed to go by itself and actually click to adjust out as far as possible and then be set up right. I never did try to do that, but I assume that they uh, needed to be cut anyway because they were grinding. So, you know, we went ahead and cut them and now we're, you know, gonna have a nice smooth pad so now we can adjust them out. But I'm not sure if that auto adjusting method would work for me, but you know, right now we can make sure they're adjusted and I can try that later. But I'm gonna go ahead and spin this and I'll show you guys how tough it is to put the drum on after I'm done spinning it. So right here we have the drum and we're pressing it on and I just want to show you guys how tight it is but it's pretty difficult to push on but once it does go on and it's tough you gotta make sure that it's seated to give you the accurate reading but it might feel pretty stiff at first but if you you know get it seated good enough it should uh loosen up a little bit and I'll show you guys what it ends up spinning like after I get it fully seated. So I got the car back on the ground and both of my shoes for my rear brakes are adjusted properly and the drums you know they grab just a little bit so I think we're gonna have much better braking performance in the rear of the car now so I'm pretty excited about that. I am taking the car tomorrow morning for an alignment so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and then I'll be able to actually drive this thing and show you guys how it handles with the new coilovers and all that good stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I uh, gotta get it aligned so we don't kill the tires, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And if you liked it, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to see more. Definitely gonna have some pulls coming up soon. Um, the car is getting pretty dialed for the tune, so I'm excited. It's, uh, it's really coming together. It's looking really good. So hopefully you guys are enjoying and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.